Their stories come from r slash petty revenge. I stole my buddy's hat back from his ex-girlfriend. I originally posted a story on r slash am I the butthole and several people told me that this sub might like it so here it goes. Backstory, my friend broke up with his girlfriend about 6 months ago when she cheated on him. It messed him up pretty bad. Lee, I spent a lot of time helping him keep his mind off her. Yesterday I happened to run into her at a Target and seeing her in person made me realise how much I disliked her for doing that to my friend. But I acted civilly and tried to excuse myself quickly. Then I noticed that she was wearing my friend's hat, which I brought up to her, trying to sound casual. She didn't seem to think much of it, but confirmed that it was. So I just said, that's what I thought, and swiped it off her head <laughs> and turned to leave. She was shocked that I would be so blatant and berated me for being a jerk. She also claimed that she had lies, to which I responded that if she did, they wouldn't be on her head. I pretty much just walked out at that point, and she didn't really try to pursue me. My fiancé says that I was definitely a jerk slash immature. I admit that I was being immature, but I maintained that it wasn't her hat, and my friend was happy to get it back. And the commenter replies to that. You return something to its rightful owner, I'd say that's typically a not the arsehole move. To counter your fiancé's claim, good work. And yeah, I don't know why your fiancé feels like you're the jerk in the situation. You're not a jerk. And I also love the fact that in this story, oh, peek you. Take the hat off her head. Let her, like, berate you. And then you count her one of her, like, pathetic attempts to let her keep the hat. And then just turn and walk away and that's it. Just leaving her there. All confused and, like, gobsmacked. Picked a stuck paper clip. I used to work for an office as the collection boy, being sent out up to eight times a day to collect various things. Generally, when they got the call, I'd be sent out immediately, but I realised one member of the team had started holding back, ensuring I'd have to finish late, particularly if I'd mentioned I had plans that evening. This team member was also in charge of office stationery and equipment, which gave me an idea. I photocopied a paperclip 500 times, moving it around occasionally on both A4 and A3, and then put the sheets back into their photocopiers, blank paper reserves mixed in amongst some blank sheets. They got an engineer out three times to take the machine apart, find a rogue paper clip that was appearing on their documents before they realised. And people um, commented to this. One commenter says, Clippy is back and he's not happy. Another says, Fucking genius. I'm stealing this to mess with my co-workers. And someone replies to that with, Revenge breeds creativity, it seems. And I have to say, that is genius, because that took them three times, and you can imagine what it was like, taking the entire thing apart, trying to find out where this paper clip is, and what it's pressing on, and where it's hiding and stuff. And the best part is, they don't know it's you, they just know it's someone. So even when they figure out what's happening, they're still like, well, who the hell did this? But that is geniusly petty, and I applaud you. Good show. Moving on. Don't greet us, expect to wait. Pettiness to the max, but that is kind of what this sub is for. I work as a server in a restaurant which serves mainly business-related lunches and dinners, as it is located in a dense office district. We have posted a sign at the front door saying, please wait here and wait for our staff to help you, because we have a lot of reservations each day, and this helps us manage all the reservations. Assign you a table and cancel any walk-ins if it gets too full. Some people, however, either cannot read or do not give a damn. 90% of the time there is at least one person of staff either looking at or close to the sign. Sometimes it happens that we are either on the other side of the building managing the cash register or doing something else and we have had people just walk past the sign, you really can't miss it, and head towards the terrace to sit down. Some people also ignore our greetings and just head to a table. Our position on this is if you cannot be bothered to wait until we help you or greet us back, then we will greet you. When we greet you on entry, you can expect to wait for a while because our staff will not be helping you anytime soon. Maybe after 15, 20 minutes or so. Maybe that'll teach them to be a little bit nicer to serve staff. And yes, the managers share the same sentiment and forbid us helping them when this happens. And I just had to take the this comment from here. Petty revenge. Best served with a long wait. And then OP replies to that with petty revenge. 
best not served at all. <laughs> I found his Twitter trolls, real identity, and made them apologise. So this all started about a month ago. I'm quite an avid UFC fan and often comment and engage with posts on Twitter. I can't remember exactly what the post was now, but someone didn't take too kindly to one of my comments about a fight. Because of this, he made it his personal mission to troll me. This kid's account was full of him spreading hate, and every media post was a screenshot of accounts that had blocked him with the caption, another one owned. I would usually block someone like this, but I'll be honest, I didn't want to give him the satisfaction. It got to the point where he was replying to every comment I made and messaging me multiple times a day. I obviously ignored it, hoping it would go away, but it went on for 19 days straight. I counted prior to making this post. You petty revenge. I eventually replied and asked him if he had a problem with me. Send me his phone number. He did not. After a week of me ignoring him, he sent me a phone number. I asked him to screenshot his phone ID to prove it was his real number. He did, and it was. I searched it on Google to find the area code. This wasn't enough. But luckily for me, he had sent his PayPal QR code to a celebrity to ask to be blessed. I used this QR code and tried to pay him some so I could get so I could find the name associated with this PayPal. Using this, I searched his name on Facebook and filtered the search for his area code. I found him. I knew this was him, as his cover photo was a picture of his dog, one he'd posted prior on Twitter. I told him I'd give him one last chance to apologise. He was still being horrible and racist. I am a white guy, as he could see on my profile, but he kept calling me the N-word. I sent a screenshot of his and his mother's Facebook account. He had his account pretty open and had her as mother. His demeanor completely changed. He got scared and started profusely apologizing. I feel kind of bad for this, but I told him I was going to be monitoring his account in the future and let anyone else know who he decides to troll his real identity. He begged for my forgiveness. I don't think it helps I threatened to find his dress also. This kind of, this is kind of for my own satisfaction, but after he blocked me, I screenshotted that and put it on my account with the same captions he did. As assumed, this guy was like 15 years old, so I guess you could say this is extra petty. I feel like he got what he's deserved. The end. And I have to say with this one, great revenge. Great, great revenge. And hopefully this scared this guy straight. Hopefully someone actually managed to find out enough information about him like that. Made him realise that he's not as invincible as he thinks he is. And now he's going to uh, keep his views to himself. I don't know if this will change him as a person. But at least it's going to make Twitter a slightly better place. Thanks for watching the video. As always, like, comment, share and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out, guys.